All right, hey everyone. I'm trying something a little new now. I have a different camera set up. Uh, I really wanted to make a video on these two pretty cool uh, pieces of Casio history. They are data bank calculators. Um, so the Casio has a huge line of data banks starting in 83. Um, uh, probably a few hundred different models. It used to be a really popular line because um, they're not just calculators. They will store phone numbers and schedule information. There's, there's different models. The standard Casio data banks don't have this keypad on them. They just have uh, two big buttons on the front and you would kind of letter by letter increment or decrement. You probably dealt with that somewhere. Uh, you could put in people's names and phone numbers in a lot of them. Uh, those are the DB line. Um, there's a DBA, a DBT line. There's, there's a bunch of different data banks. I'm a big fan of these uh, DBC and DBX models. These have this full keypad. makes it a lot easier to enter numbers and text, um, but since the keypad's there, um, they're also a calculator watch. These two are DBX models. Um, now, Casio never says explicitly what their letters, you know, their, those prefixes mean, but I'm pretty sure that means like data bank, extended, or capacity sort of thing. Um, because these two models store 100 records. Um, you can either store a name and a number, or you can store a date and time with a little note and it would appear on this little calendar at the top of the screen. Um, it has shares the memory between them. I, I'll make probably a separate video on this watch right here, but this is the original DBC60. This is the first watch in the whole series, and it's pretty cool. Um, this used the, uh, yeah, the 563 module, and it only stored 50 records, and it had a couple of limitations. Um, they improved that module I think it's the 676 in the uh, in the one that followed up uh, that watch, the DBC 61 and 610. Uh, but it's the DBX models that have this uh, new design and uh, 100 records. They, they share this case with also the DBC 62, but uh, not the module. That's um, on these two watches. There's another watch. I think it's the DBX 10. Three, which came out a little later, has a newer design. Um, so yeah, I think this watch was 1990, and I think this was 91. They're in fair condition, the ones that I have. Um, this one especially, the DBX 102, a uh, little bit of scratching on the crystal, but overall pretty good shape. Um, you see the back right there, um, that paint has rubbed off, and you see it's rubbing off here. Most Casios just have a stainless steel back. Um, these are painted. They're only one of a one of a few. Like most would look like like this. This is a, a more recent data bank calculator watch. So I think that's kind of interesting that this gray watch here had gray paint over the stainless steel, and the black one had black paint over it. And you kind of see how that's worn away there. I, I not only these data bank watches, I haven't seen many of the, any watches that do that. Um, but what you see here is kind of common. They would come out with a black resin version and then a slightly more premium version, uh, which was usually like chrome plated and uh, comes with a metal bracelet. Unfortunately, this is the wrong bracelet for this watch. You see it's a little, you know, a little dressier. You see these polished like interlink sections. Um, it's supposed to have a bracelet that looks more like that. Uh, that's unfortunate. Um, whoever owned this before I did uh, put this one on. Not bad, but unfortunately they used spring bars uh, that have no little shoulder there. Uh, this kind of spring bar can only be removed from a watch that has drilled lugs probably won't be able to see it'll be out of focus but like on this watch has a little hole here 
this watch doesn't have drilled lugs, so there's no easy way to remove this bracelet uh, other than taking like a jeweler's saw or something and cutting that out. Um, this, however, the 102, I'm pretty sure does have the correct um, band or uh, straps. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's the original one. You see, um, this has this writing here that says databank. Um, what was kind of common of the era, and maybe even now, is you can buy replacement bands, but the replacement bands are sometimes a completely different band entirely, a completely different shape. Uh, and if it is the right shape, it usually doesn't have the writing. So you can buy replacement bands for this watch, and they, they, they have this exact same mold, this exact same shape, but they usually don't say that. So I'm pretty sure this is original. It says data bank there, it doesn't say anything on the top one. It does say Casio on the keeper. Um, I'll bring back this TBC61. You see this is data bank. It looks slightly different, and it does say Casio up here. It doesn't say Casio there. So, yeah, that's, that's the brief introduction. The module on these is the same. Let's see if I can remember. I think it's the 542. Nope, the 642. So the 642 has all the functionality that the 676 had in the, um, the, the 50 record kind of model of this. Other than a light, these watches do not have a light, whereas the um, DBC 61, 610, and DBC 62 has a light but only 50 records. I like this case style a lot. I do wish they, they had a light. So I will um, just give you a brief overview of how this works. You see on the main timekeeping mode, you see the time with seconds, um, the, the day, year, month, date. So it displays everything at once. Uh, maybe just so you're interested, you can, um, you can press these three buttons here. There's an adjust mode and a what was it, 12 hour timekeeping button there? Um, you press them simultaneously. Yeah, do it right. Um, all the segments will light up. A lot of Casios do this, so you can use this to kind of test the, uh, the functionality. But it's, it's cool to demonstrate because then you can actually see everything it can do. And I think it has. No, different models have different test modes beyond just seeing that. Um, yeah, let's go through uh, let's let's go through the mode. So this is timekeeping mode. I'm not going to show you how to set. It's just like every I got to keep it flush against the surface, or else it gets blurry. Um, I'm using a nice camera, but it's very close, and it just is unable to focus closer than this. So the the next mode is um, the telememo mode. It has a schedule mode. It has a calculator mode. It has a world time where it maintains the same seconds as your normal time, but you can set um, the time differently. Actually, I haven't played with this. It says LUN. Um, if you do anything in any mode, then the mode button, the next time you press it, goes back to timekeeping. So, okay, yeah, it has an alarm, a countdown timer, and a stopwatch. So, time this. That should be everything. Yeah, unfortunately, the the beep on this is broken. I, I haven't looked into it. Usually, that's an easy fix. There's a tiny, tiny spring um, on the module that connects to the back plate, and um, wh which is where the like piezo electric speaker is. Uh, let, let's let's play with each of the modes. Uh, going off into the telememo mode, you see there's nothing here because um, there's not storing any any numbers right now. Um, if you press the equal button, you see how many um, things are used. Only one record is being used on this. It should be by, like that, by the way. Same module, so it'll sound that way. This might be a little less annoying. Um, if we want to add a record, I'm pretty sure... Um, so there's nothing here, so normally you would scroll through the different phone numbers with these arrow buttons, but we uh, <clears throat> we press uh, the adjust button, and now we have a little cursor here. I'm pretty sure that 
you can give a nine character label on this, nine characters of alphanumerics. That's a cat, if you hear that sound. They don't like me making videos on Casios. Um, so you have nine characters of alphanumerics. It only displays six at a time. If you have any more, it'll scroll. So um, you can hit any of these letters, and if you hit them twice, it does the next thing at that key. So that's C, D, and dash. This should be A, B, colon, yeah, colon, A, B, colon, yeah, this, H. So I thought it would let me enter in the, the number here. So apparently it's just just alpha. Wait, I, J. I wasn't pressing harder. I, J, 9. Okay, yeah. So you can press any of these buttons, get any character you want. You can go left and right with these two buttons when you're in the setting mode. And you can, okay, so 9X. That's uh, someone's name. 9XK. <laughs> Weird name. Um, yeah, you can keep on hitting so this is space. Oh no, we just keep on going forward until we've gone through all the nine characters there. And then we enter whatever digits we want. Um, these are only numbers. So now this part doesn't make a ton of sense to me because you get 12 digits of numbers, but that doesn't line up with most phone numbers. They're usually, you know, it's like 7 or 10, I guess, plus 2 for a country code. But it doesn't have to be a phone number, any number that you want. Okay, so let's let's uh, demonstrate what it looks like when it scrolls. Okay, so now we've entered in a bunch of characters and a number, and if I press the adjust again, it will sort that with everything else, and you see it is scrolling that number. Cool. Now since we're in the preview mode, if we press the number buttons to go back and forth, you would be able to scroll through everyone's, all, all of your records. Um, if you want to change an existing record, you just go to it and you press the adjust button, which will uh, I'll go out of that. Come on. Yeah, uh, if you want to add a new thing, you just go to the new one and then you would adjust this. Um, yeah, it, it's worth mentioning there's a uh, secret function on this. So if I press the secret button when I'm scrolling up and down through things, um, it asks for a password here. Um, I've entered it in before as uh, 1111. It says OK, it matches, and now I have a different set of phone numbers. So if anyone stole this, they wouldn't just get all your numbers. You can password protect them. Uh, I, I forget offhand how you reset that password. You can reset it if you forget it, but then all of the records that were password protected are gone. You see, when I hit this, this little key lit up. I'm in secret mode. I could press it again to go out of secret mode. Um, yeah, so if I enter in the wrong password, it'll say error. Um, I should have looked up how to reset that password before I did this, but uh, anyways, that's pretty cool. So we'll go, cool, we're in secret mode. Cool, let's enter in our first thing for the person's name will be Guy. And, you know, the, the guy's just 888. Cool, Guy. It's sorting Guy. Now you see there's only one thing in the non secret one, and there's one thing in the secret. Cool. That's it. That's all the those things. With um, well that that's tell a memo for you. It, it, it's it's so interesting to me because today that's okay. We're 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 gonna get really loud with the cats. So I'm I'm gonna try to be quick about this. What I love so much about these is that today this is not a very impressive. Feature. You wouldn't be using this. Today, your phone can store way more than 50 or 100 records. You can store 
thousands of contacts. Uh, first name, last name, address. You know, when you go into your mapping program and search for that person's name, you'll see where they are if you put an address. You could share it, text it with someone. You have multiple numbers for home, mobile, and everything. But there was a time when people didn't have phones. 80s and 90s, people carried around address books. And you, you didn't want to make multiple copies of it. it you know, if you went to work, you would have one at the office, and you'd bring it home to make the same calls there. You'd keep it on you in case you needed to use a payphone or something. It was like your lifeline. And if you lost it, that was, that was a problem. You'd lose all those numbers. Being able to store all of your important numbers on your wrist at any time was the coolest thing. Now, I wasn't uh, like an, an office worker or, or in business at the time. I, I, I was born in the 80s. But as a kid in the 80s, you saw this. This was the coolest thing in the world, to be able to store people's numbers. And um, I, I didn't have this model. I had a, one of the DVC models as a kid. I thought it was the coolest thing. And it still has this important history behind it. So I, I don't want the video to be too long. So I, I just also want to show off. Oh, yeah. Let me go back. When you're in the... Uh, main mode, if you just press this button, you see the most recently used contacts. So it's just kind of a convenient shortcut, and you see the most recent um, schedule with that button. So in schedule mode, kind of the same thing. You can go up and down between different schedules. I only have this one event scheduled. Uh, in schedule mode, you, I think you get more than nine characters. I think you get 12 characters. Um, you give it a label, and you give it a time. I'll, I'll go to the next record and I'll edit that and we'll say that on okay so what is it now yeah so on August um, 16 yeah whatever at, at 10 a.m. I have to um, I have to sleep I'm gonna can you imagine trying to do this while I was on your wrist you meet someone and you're like oh yeah I'll, I'll meet your party and then you just start entering stuff in for the time and date of that party that would just be really I imagine people took this off anytime you had to do anything serious okay so on August 16th at 10am I have to remember to sleep it doesn't make any sense, but I just want to go through this. I'm going to save that record. It's going to sort it. And now you notice, you see up there, we have this week and next week. And the little pip for next week, for next Sunday, which is in two days from now, filled in. So at any one time, this will tell you at a glance if you have any appointments, meetings, or anything over the next two weeks. It doesn't say the start and stop time. There's no such thing. There are other data banks that do. Um, and I don't think there's an easy way to just uh, at a glance go through. Well, maybe. I think it I think it sorts, yeah, your appointments in this order, yeah. So it fills up that, yeah. So we'll go back to the main screen, and we see we have two pips for the two appointments I have there. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, the other functionality of the, the watch you'd kind of understand. 8 times 90 equals, yeah. Pretty standard. There's a there's a memory function and everything. Nothing too crazy. Calculator, the world time, I kind of explained. Alarm. Countdown timer. It's fully featured. Um, you can kind of do splits and stop, and then you see the uh, first and second place, right? Um, so the alarm, I th yeah, so I can just do the alarm and the hourly chime, have them both. Yeah, I think that's a good breakdown of this watch for anyone who's interested uh, to know more about it. This is the same. So anything else I wanted to mention? Um, no, not really. I'm. This is the first video I've made with this camera set up. If you like it, like and subscribe. I just want to get to 100 subscribers. Maybe you could help me get there. All right? Thank you very much.